For too long, warriors and machines have taken their place at the top tables. But now it's time. Insects, rise up! You're giving me nothing, by the way. Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, a.k.a. MBT, back again with the inaugural episode of the 2019 season of 10 Minute Testing. Over the years, there have been a few decks that I've done my best to become associated with, Phantasm, Spiral, Trickstar, but none of which have I been more reluctantly known for than Crawler. I just wanted to have some fun and play Maneater Bug in 2018, and it turns out I wasn't the only one. So for what I can only assume is no other reason than hearing my lusty longings for playable flip monsters, Konami has released Deus Ex Crawler, a true Deus Ex Machina for this deck that lacks a win con. So with a couple of quick substitutions and an obvious supplementary engine, I present to you Prediction Princess Crawler. So here's the list, and while it's lacking some of the format staples that Crawler previously relied upon, it's a hell of a lot more cohesive. As always, I'll give you a little bit of background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and as always, the card by card. So firstly, for those of you that don't know, Crawler is the latest installment in Konami's unending quest to make flip monsters playable. A series of level 2 insect monsters, Crawlers aim to put your opponent into a lose-lose situation. Either you're attacking into them all face down and both triggering their flip effect and losing to World Legacy and Shadow, or you're sending them to the graveyard via a card effect and triggering their second effect, which allows the Crawler pilot to summon two more Crawlers from the deck. It's an impressive stun strategy, and it's enabled by a series of extremely powerful generic insect support cards like Worm bait alongside some sweet tribal cards like World Legacy Survivor and World Legacy's Communion. Unfortunately, like most stun archetypes outside of Geist, it suffered from one fatal problem. It had almost no linear game plan to speak of. Its most miraculous turn 1 setups involved using worm bait to make a link to crawler or summoning two monsters off of World Legacy and Shadow. Not exactly a 6 material rongo. Until now, the inclusion of a 9-star crawler into the lineup does wonders for the archetype. Now, whenever a crawler floats, one of the monsters it'll special summon is this enormous stinker who negates all the activated effects of any monsters your opponent controls. More importantly, however, it facilitates some wonderful turn 1 setups when combined with Prediction Princess Teratai. She's an old 9-star ritual monster who special summons a flip effect monster from your graveyard at the end of your turn and has a World Legacy Pawn stapled to her for free. Now, instead of fumbling around with insect tribal links, your optimal turn 1 involves placing a one-sided skill drain on board alongside a monster that protects it and represents infinite crawler activations for the remainder of the game. In the event your opponent outs your Deus Ex, instead of floating into another crawler, this house of a support card floats into another level 9, allowing use of another Teratai next turn. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First, we've got our Ritual Monsters. There's not a very satisfying normal summon in Crawler, so we're playing both 3 Teratai and 3 Manju. For Crawlers, I'm playing a slim 11 non-Deus ones, 3 Receptor, the Stratos, 2 Spine, the Maneater Bug, 2 Axon, the MST, 2 Gleal, who unbricks hands with too many big Crawlers, and 1 each of Dendrite, the Foolish Burial, and Ranvier, the Salvage. Finally, we've got 3 of the big boy himself, Deus X. For spells, we're on 3 copies of Prediction Princess Ritual, 3 Pre-Preparation of Rites, 2 Foolish Mass Burial, which flexes as additional copies of Manju, and our Crawler support. 3 copies of Survivors, 2 in Shadow and a Terraforming, 3 Communion, and 3 Pawns. In the extra, we've got VFD for a Greedy 9 setup, Tornado Dragon and Abyss for multi-Manjus, Ntis and Herald of the Arclight for Mass Burial, and Boral Sword, Nightmare's Unicorn, Phoenix and Cerberus, Behemoth Fiendus, Quailark, Neurogus, Synaptus, Mrs. Radiant, and Picanifia for Lynx. So with that, let's jump into the games! Our first match is up against Infernoid. You can see our opponent's opener is pretty good. They have a copy of Void Vanishment, a card to pitch, a hand trap, and uh-oh, is that a Sajet I Spy? One of the first rules of Infernoid is you have to be very good and not drawing that card. We're going first, which is pretty good news for us. We're going to start by activating the effect of World Legacy Survivors. What do we find? But, oh my god, every single card in our deck. We're going to go ahead and take ourselves a Deus Ex Crawler, then activate the effect of Manju. Our opponent is going to Psyframe Gamma, but that is not what you want to negate. Afterwards, we'll fire off a copy of Prediction Ritual for Teratai, set a card, and then at end step, bring back this copy of Deus Ex Crawler before flipping it up with the effect of Prediction Princess Teratai. Our opponent is going to draw for turn. They draw a Called by the Grave. They'll start with Void Vanishment's effect to get a copy of Void Feast, then set an Imagination and pass it back to us. Thankfully, we don't have any extra deck 
effect monsters. We're going to activate the Grave Effect of Prediction Ritual before getting in for 2,000 and 2,700 points of damage. Our opponent's not in a lot of danger. In end step, we're going to get back a copy of Glia, then activate Glia by flipping it up with Terratai, getting our other Deus Ex Crawler that we sent off of Survivors. Our opponent draws for turn. They're going to flip up this copy of Void Feast to get a Homodic, a Petrela, and a Decatron. Of course, all their effects are negated, so it's not a big deal. They'll go into Do Little Chimera and Onnonku. We'll set that sucker face down, and they will concede. Our second match is up against Salomon Great, and I can hear you all in the comments. I'm gonna check them out, I promise. I just... I haven't read them all yet, okay? We're going first, which is pretty good, but unfortunately our hand is not. We have a copy of Manju with nothing to back it up, and several crawlers. This is one of the old world crawler hands, where we're going to activate the field spell, special summon a card, and then pass it back to our opponent, hoping that they refuse to read. Our opponent draws for turn, they find a blazing mirror force, they're going to set it to play pretty cautiously around crawlers, that's pretty smart. We'll normal summon a copy of Manju, use its effect to get to Terratai, flip up this copy of Dendrite to Foolish Burial a Deus Ex, special summon an additional crawler, and get to attacking. Our opponent's going to activate blazing mirror force, uh-oh, that's going to trigger the grave effect of Dendrite. Right, getting us a Deus Ex Crawler and an Axon. That's especially bad for our opponent because it now turns on Prediction Ritual, sending this copy of Deus Ex Crawler that we just got off of Dendrite, then special summoning it in the end phase and flipping it up with Terratai's effect. Our opponent's going to start by normal summoning a Jack Jaguar and going into a Velenix. They'll activate the effect of Gazelle. Both of those effects, of course, once they're on the field, will be negated. Afterwards, they're going to activate Spinny's effect, so it special summons itself. They'll overlay for Stelio. We're going to flip up our copy of Spine to destroy it, and afterwards, our opponent will concede. Alright, so it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's on Geist, so I guess we'll get to see who the Apex stun deck truly is. Unfortunately, we move at a glacial pace, they move at a glacial pace, you're in for the long haul. Our opponent's going to start by activating this copy of Pot of Desires, drawing a couple of cards, setting four traps and a monster, and passing it back to us. We draw Survivors, which unbricks our otherwise quite bricky hand, but unfortunately our opponent has an Imperial Order. Why is this card legal? We'll Normal Summon a Dentrite, take 200 points of damage, and now that we have Communion online, we'll set that as well. Unfortunately for us, our opponent has a second Altergeist, so they can go into Hextia, flip up this copy of Materialization, and dash any hopes we had of activating Communion in the near future. They'll get in for 1,000 and 1,800 before passing it back to us. We draw a copy of Shadow, which of course is is going to be negated, we'll activate it anyway for the lulls, set a card, and then it gets returned to hand as our opponent returns their own materialization. They'll set both of those and get in for 1500, then pass it back to us. Unfortunately, our opponent has the Silquidius materialization lock, and I don't know how we're going to out it. They'll use materialization as soon as possible to get Silquidius. We'll normal summon a copy of Receptor so we can get it off the board on our own terms, but of course it adds it back to the hand, and we'll pass back to our opponent. Our opponent draws a Marionetter, and ugh, woof. They're going to go ahead and get a copy of Secret Village as well. We will activate communion because we basically have to, but all it really does is forces the activation of Hextia. They're going to get a protocol, which is terrible news for us, for getting in for a fair amount of damage if we are allowed to flip this guy face down, which we are. We get a glee all, and of course World Legacy Shadows does not fire. We draw for turn, and what do we find? But another spell we can't activate. Our opponent's going to activate Materialization to get back a Silquidius. We'll activate Puppet in order to activate glee all's effect. Our opponent will negate it with their copy of Protocol, but of course that triggers glee all's Grave effect, and now we can get a couple of Crawlers from our deck. Now Deus Ex Crawler looks good, but only because he has 3,000 defense. Our win condition here is just to burn our opponent out. We can't negate any of their effects because, of course, protocol prevents it. It sucks when your opponent has built-in protection to your monsters. They will special summon Multifaker, get themselves a Seek, go into another copy of Hextia, use the effect of Seek, and then pass it back to us. I am very content with waiting here. We'll fire off a copy of Survival just to get it out of our hand, I suppose. At this point, I'm really not thinking with my brain, just with my heart. We'll activate the effect of Axon, trying to destroy this set card. They will protocol in response, destroying Axon. We'll activate Axon's effect, and well, there's Ash Blossom. That's bad news for us, but we still have a big stinker we can sit on. They'll take 700 more points of damage, and we're so close. They're going to activate the effect of Marionetter, then use Marionetter's second effect to get back Melusik, and oh shoot, that outs Crawler, doesn't it? Okay, well, they will go ahead and out Deus Ex, set a card, and pass it back to us. What do we find but a Terratai, which we can't get out because spells are negated. We'll set one card and hope we can survive. They'll go into a Hextia, a Materialization for a Silquidius, then use Silquidius's effect on our face-down monster, and we have to hope that 4,000 is enough here. Thankfully, it looks like it's going to be. They will normal summon a Melusik, get in for 500, destroying our set card, which is a copy of Pawns, get in for 800, get in for 2,000, and we're hanging on by a thread. They'll then go into Topologic Bomber Dragon, and I try to be a little bit cheeky here after they've resolved all of their effects, and use the Grave Effect of Communion, which allows me to special summon a Crawler at a link point. Unfortunately, it specials in face-down defense position, so I don't get the float effect. We draw for turn, and all we have to do is 200 points of damage. We'll activate Prediction Ritual. We'll use Terratai's effect to flip up this sucker. There's Infinite Transience. Oh, there's a copy of Multifaker. Oh, there's Topologic, and we'll concede.
All right, so it's time for game two, and sweet, sweet comeuppance. The downside of all of these Imperial Orders is that sometimes you draw every single copy. Our opponent's hand is otherwise quite good, a copy of Mary Netter and an Ash Blossom, and we can easily play through it. We're going to start by activating this copy of Survivors. That's going to prompt an Ash Blossom from our opponent, obviously. Afterwards, we're going to normal summon a copy of Manju and get a Terra Tie to our hand. We will activate Prediction Ritual to get Terra Tie to our side of the board, sending a copy of Crawler to Graveyard, then subsequently reborning it and flipping it up on our end step. Our opponent will draw for turn. They find a Solemn Strike, not very good going second. They're going to activate the effect of Marionetter, which of course is negated. They'll attack into our copy of Manju, but we'll flip this sucker face down with our copy of Teratai, and they'll pass it back. We draw for turn. It's another Survivor, so we're going to fire that off. It'll get Imperial ordered, but that's fine with me at this point. I don't need to resolve anything else. We'll activate the Grave Effect of Ritual, then we will flip our own copy of Manju down because it triggers on Flip Summon. Our opponent's going to respond with a copy of Solemn Strike, which turns the clock back a little bit for them. We're going to set a card in Main Phase 2 and pass it back to our opponent. They draw a Metaverse. Oh, sweet, sweet victory. We draw for turn, and what do we find but a Gleal? We'll flip up this copy of Dendrite, and that should be lethal, but just for good measure, because I don't like counting, we'll go ahead and normal summon Gleal, and our opponent will concede. All right, so it's time for that all-important game three, and oh my god, are we going to get to resolve a spell this set? Our opponent's going first. The first thing they're going to do is activate this copy of Pot of Desires. They'll draw a couple of traps, set three normal summon a Silquidius, and activate... Uh, Secret Village of the Spellcasters. Well, our hand's not particularly good. We're going to normal summon an Axon and set a copy of Communion, hoping that in an attempt to plus us, our opponent accidentally pluses us even further. Unfortunately, it turns out they're not as illiterate as we suspect, and they just attack the Axon. Learning from our mistake, we set a copy of Spine and pass it back. Our opponent is more than happy to pass it back to us as well. We draw a Receptor, we'll flip up this Spine and activate its effect. Our opponent will activate an Infinite Transience in response, but thankfully we can destroy this copy of Silquidius because Receptor has 900 attack. As we go in for three they'll flip up a materialization and yikes there's the loop they draw for turn and what do you know it's imperial order they'll set that and pass it back to us we draw into well a field spell we can't activate so we'll set our boys in defense position and pass it back to our opponent they will pass it back to us we draw a flip monster and set it before passing it back to our opponent and you may not like it liberals but this is peak Yu-Gi-Oh. our opponent passes it back to us one more time before we finally take action and flip up this copy of crawler receptor our opponent responds with an infinite transience the follow-up to that is the effect of multi-faker in hand when they activate the board effect we'll activate world legacy communion that allows us to activate the effect of of Crawler Receptor, which promptly gets Solemn Struck. At the very least, we can now go into Quail Arc, which can attack into this copy of Silquidius. They will bounce our set card before we attack into Silquidius, returning this copy of Manifestation to the hand, and the shields are down! Activate all the spells right now while they don't have spellcasters, and... Oh. I'm playing the Insect deck, and yet I was baited. Our opponent's going to go ahead and set their entire hand before passing it back to us. Imperial Order is a house of a card. They're going to special summon this copy of Silquidius with the manifestation they just set and try to activate this copy of Multifaker once again. That's going to trigger the effect of Quailark as I activate Communion. We get ourselves a copy of Spine and Receptor and hope for the best. We're going to normal summon a Manju, but Silquidius is going to go ahead and bounce one of our set cards. We're going to get a Prediction Ritual to our hand, but it doesn't do anything. We'll then activate the Grave Effect of the other Prediction Ritual before allowing our opponent to plus even further by continuing the loop. Our opponent draws again, and what are they find but an ash blossom that'll take 700 and once again that's our win condition they're going to go ahead and activate the on-field effect of uh, multi-faker and now i can't stop it anymore because they have protocol active they will attack into our manju with a copy of hextia then go into another hextia to plus off of the first hextia into an additional copy of multi-faker they'll activate materialization bringing back hextia and triggering the effect of multi-faker multi-faker getting a copy of silquidius and this game looks just about over we don't have the time to drown our opponent out of resources or life points we'll go into a quail arc and try to activate its effect it'll return it in response we'll activate world legacy communion they will ash blossom god that's painful even though technically we didn't have to do it from the deck it does apply and then they'll protocol the extra deck effect of quail arc to float we'll set two and pray that we're not dead we are at a healthy 6400 life points but we are in fact dead they're going to attack directly for 1200 27 and 500 over lethal so we're back with the deck and yikes i mean i know things never look good when you're on the hope they accidentally kill themselves with imperial order plan but that one hurt to watch more than usual let's dive into the pros and cons first the pros one each half of the deck complements the other's weaknesses. Crawler was in desperate need of something proactive to do, and Prediction Princess was in desperate need of a flip monster with a powerful continuous effect instead of a one-off like Guard Dog or Pot of the Forbidden. Two, both halves of the deck are super consistent. I played very few games in which additional Terra Ties or Crawlers were stranded in my hand, and when they were, it was because of Imperial Order. And three, it doesn't actually break the budget to play this version. Herald of the Arclight is about five bucks, but aside from that, everything is still dirt cheap. And now the cons. 
One, you're missing out on the powerful staples that usually make up the remainder of crawler decks. One of the upsides of having so much empty space was that jamming strikes and hand traps into the deck felt natural. Now both sides require so much devotion that you'd be hard pressed to squeeze in anything that isn't tribal. Two, the deck is still not great at beating established boards. If something like Sky Striker is allowed to set up three negates, no amount of Manju shenanigans is going to let you get Teratai onto the board before you've been engaged out of the game. And three, since you're a control deck, you will always be occupying the same meta space as Geist, and unfortunately Geist is the better deck. All in all, I love playing this deck. I mean, I have it in paper for God's sake, but I'm under no delusions about its playability. While Deus Ex Crawler certainly pushes the deck from head-achingly difficult to take a game with to occasionally steals sets against meta, there's a long way to go before we're crawling to tier 1. So that's that. I'm trying out a couple of new video things for this one, let me know how they went over. If you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I'm on twitch.tv slash monoblutron every Monday from 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time, and if you have an idea for a certain deck or archetype you want me to play on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comments section below and I'll see what I can do. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.